Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I am extremely delighted to, to welcome you here today. Let's see if I can get the technology to work here. Okay, good. This is the, 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 this is the feature of the forum, and we are delighted to have the, a phenomenal group of participants here in the audience. We are also happy to announce that the event has sold out, and so then we were able to make the, the live webcast available to people in the hallway, but also around the world. So I wanted to say, if, if anyone's uncomfortable with the remarks being uh, transmitted or archived, um, just keep that in mind. Uh, <laughs> so it's a great pleasure to, to welcome you to this event. The, I, 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 a few thanks are in order before we get started. I want to particularly acknowledge the chair of the symposium, Gail DeKosnick, is right here. She is, um, <laughs> she deserves credit for conceiving of the idea and and really executing doing, with a, ver, a huge amount of details and and, um, and and insights and coordination. I also want to thank Susan Miller, the associate director of the center, who's been tirelessly involved in the in planning and organizing of this event over the last four months. There are many other people. I want to thank CMAC Faradani, our, our uh, wonderful webmaster, all the affiliated faculty and our, our students, our advisory board members, the work-study students, the graduate student coordinators, and I want to thank our sponsors. In particular, I want to thank Craigslist, Jim Buckmaster, the CEO, for his for his insights and creative ideas about the internet and society. I want to thank the university, in particular the chancellor, the vice chancellor, and Kathy Koshland for their support throughout, the, for the support of the Berkeley Center for New Media. And I want to thank the Institute for the Future, Marina Gorbis, the director, for their visionary approach to contemporary issues. I also want to thank Taylor Moore and the coordinators here at Citrus, Paul Wright, Domenico, and Kasarov for coordinating a number of the, uh, of the technical issues of our space. Um, I want to thank all of the speakers and moderators. And most of all, I want to thank all of you who are here today, this morning, bright and early, and all of those people who are watching online. So thank you. And <clears throat> I should say that we are asking people to turn off your phones, um, or at least mute them, turn off the sound, or mute your uh, computers, and we're asking you not take photographs if you can avoid it. So I'm here in the, in, the, in the 10 minutes I have to try and accomplish three things. I'd like to introduce you to the Berkeley Center for New Media very briefly. I want to say a few personal remarks on the public sphere and then introduce a new technology that we've been developing here with, with, at the Berkeley Center for New Media. First, the Berkeley Center for New Media is a, is a, a center with 120 faculty affiliated and from over 35 different departments on campus. We, we approach topics at the, uh, related to media from three different perspectives, from the humanities, art and design, and technology. One of the things that we think about a lot is what is a media? The people in the, the press talk about mass media, so newspapers, radio, television is, is a common definition. But people in the art, in, in, coming from the art world and art community often think of medium as what is the, 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 the tool that you use to express. So it could be oil, paint, acrylic, etc. So we've tried to go back to the, ori the origins of the word. Medium comes from the Latin medius. It's an intervening element. So for us, medium is that which facilitates perception. It's a very broad definition. In a sense, we think of a medium as a lens. So it's something that um, allows us to see the world, to engage the world in new ways. This means that it would incorporate something as broad as the alphabet, the printing press, and the telescope. In fact, even the electric light is considered a medium, as Marshall McLuhan famously observed, that the electric light is often escapes attention as a communications medium precisely because it has no content. Today, the media du jour, the media that we're particularly looking at are issues, are, are technologies such as Wi-Fi, the Wii, and Wikipedia, which is of particular importance for us today. So, and we also want to acknowledge that just as all lenses both transmit, 
lenses also distort. So we want to approach new media from a critical perspective. So we're interested in understanding both what they um, facilitate, but also who is, who is denied access, uh, who, is, who is unavailable and, and unable to participate. And, and how, do lens, how do these lenses media distort messages? We look at a variety of research topics from, the, from Second Life to video conferencing, developing technologies that can, uh, can allow eye contact, for example, over video conferencing systems. We're interested in the role of PowerPoint, the technology I'm using right now, and how it, uses, how it changes pedagogy. We're also interested in how we can design new technologies that would facilitate things like generosity and donations. And we're interested in robots. We're interested in all kinds of, uh, of, of, of machines that can facilitate learning and creativity. We do a lot of things beside research. We also put on a variety of, of, of events, public events. This is a, a sample of the kind of things we do. We have a regular lecture series that we've been running um, that's free and open to the public. Um, and this, um, this is our most recent today, the future of the forum. And the mission of our center we change the one thing we, we try to say is that this this has an expiration date, so we hopefully will change it every every few every few months or years. Um, the idea is to critically analyze and help shape developments of new media from paradisciplinary and global perspectives that emphasize humanities and the public interests. So that brings us to our topic today. Now, in thinking about it, um, first question is uh, so defining some of our terms. Um, I want to reassure you that this is not the forum uh, that we have in mind. Um, <laughs> when we came up with it, it came up at, uh, several times during dinner. Um, it's more like this is the kind of forum we're thinking about. Um, and uh, I think this image is also a nice reminder that fora don't last. Um, that fora change over, that must change and evolve over time. Um, we're particularly proud to bring this, uh, to have this activity going on here at Berkeley, which has a long history of, uh, of it, we are a public university. And we feel great pride in that, and we also have a long history of challenging conventional wisdoms. I should say that these are difficult times. You know, you know things are rough when the serenity prayer is, uh, has become uh, a, a controversy. Um, and, um, and, 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 and it is certainly the issues of, of public forums, fora, is, is extremely contemporary and relevant to activities that are going on around the world. One of the, the, the terms that I particularly find problematic in our, in our title is, um, of these words here, the word that I have the most problem with is the. Um, I think that we, are, we have to be extremely careful about characterizing the, the public as a singleton or a singularity, when in fact it's, it's a complex multiplicity. And this also applies to fora, to the, the many different fora that, apply, that are available out there. Now, the concept of the public has a long history, and it's very complex. Uh, it, I, I would say that it's part of the problem with the public is that it is abstract. So it's very hard to, to think about, to reason about, to, to, to get a, uh, a perspective on. And so thinkers, uh, as early as, as Kierkegaard, um, used uh, certain metaphors to, kind of, to characterize the public. Uh, Kierkegaard and Habermas uh, both talked about the idea of the public sphere. So the sphere is interesting as a, as a metaphor. It's a, it's a spatial object. It's a, um, it's a geometric object. Um, it does seem to have some nice properties for capturing the notion of the public. And many of our speakers will be talking about it today. Um, and I, I think, though, that it's, it, it, it has some interesting, well, okay. it has some interesting potentials. Now, one of the things I want to mention is that we, today is also a major event, DARPA, um, who brought us the internet 40 years ago is doing an experiment with another kind of spheres. They're putting up balloons. So if you know, if you may spot one of these <coughs> balloons around um, here in the uh, around the campus, um, these are not the balloons that DARPA is putting up. These are the balloons. And the the challenge, the network challenge, which is a fascinating uh, piece of uh, almost performance art on behalf of our of our defense department, is that they are going to launch these balloons around the country and challenge people to find these balloons, uh, the first team that finds all 10 will win a prize, $40,000. So, and the only way to solve this, clearly, is using some kind of social media. So there's a variety of approaches out there. This is happening right now. It went up at 7 a.m. this morning. 
And um, we'll see if, it, if, the pro if the prize is won by the end of today. So uh, obviously another thing that's very important to us is the issues of the network. And the, oftentimes these, um, the idea of public or participation is represented this way, with a topological model of a network. But um, we've been particularly interested in coming back to the idea of a geometric model, a metric space, coming related to the idea of the, of the, of the public sphere. So the students here, Gail, Kamiko, Ryokai, and I, have been working on a project that we call Opinion Space. And just very briefly, it's motivated by the idea that opinions are extremely valuable, that we want new techniques to be able to collect and engage opinions. There is a variety of, uh, of, of sources out there. And in fact, one of the problems is just a deluge of information. So earlier last week, Mark Zuckerberg um, posted a, a, a statement and um, about changes in policy to Facebook, and there were quickly 35,000 comments. So I don't know about the rest of you, but who has time to read all of them? Um, and this is actually bringing about what uh, Cass Sunstein calls cyber polarization. The idea is that uh, people who are on these ne on networks, because time is limited, are increasingly uh, balkanized into smaller groups that talk to each other and are unable to, um, so that everyone that, that listens to Huffington Post doesn't um, read the director report and vice versa. So what we've developed is something called Opinion Space. It is a new interface and we are fortunate to be working with the U.S. State Department. The state, this project will launch officially on June 20, or January 20th. The idea of it, very simply, is that you go into a website and your opinion on five topics related to foreign policy is you can express it by moving these sliders and then you enter a textual response to a discussion question that changes approximately every week. After you do that, you then dis you display you in the context of a space. This is a metric space, so there's a, a well-defined distance between points. You're defined here and you can see where you stand in regard to others. Are you on the fringe? Are you in the middle? Are there a lot of people near you, etc.? You also have the ability, and by the way, this, is, this involves some, a mathematical model that's very well established, a statistical model for principal component analysis. And we can do a variety of things with this. You can indicate um, with, a, with the buttons, you can see who's rated you. And more importantly, you can rate the opinions of others. So it's a way to engage um, conversation, not only with people close to you, but more importantly, with people who are far away. So this is a, a joint project with involving a number of people, so I want to thank them for this. And I want to offer you a sneak preview. This is the, f the first time we're opening this up, and I ask you not to. Unfortunately, uh, we have some, some, well, the word may get out, but the idea is that opinionspace.labs.berkeley.edu is available for a, sh uh, for a short, short time as a beta test as we're developing the project. Okay, so with that, I want to turn the floor over to, my, uh, to, the, co to the chair of the conference, Gail DeCosta.